out of court. What's going on guys? David here with you and today we're going to be talking about the multimeter and the different settings and how to use these settings and how to so that you can properly diagnose an appliance. Control board, heating element, all different aspects. You need this in the appliance repair business. Okay, this here is a, a digital multi uh, meter unit and I prefer the digital um, over the non-digital one it's just it's a lot easier it's more efficient uh, more accurate shall I say in my in my opinion but um, this unit here you can get in between 40 and 60 bucks you can get it off Amazon. You can get it, uh, I think, South. Let's see, yeah, Low Sale Southwire. I think Home Depot doesn't. This is my second one, working in, working on eight years. Um, you'll see here in the next clip how you can utilize that light there. It tells you when you're near any kind of voltage that lets you know that if you're near a wire or whatever, you can touch this clamp next to it and it'll light up. Also, when you put your leads to something, it also light up, lets you know that there is current there. So you got your leads that you can plug in. Um, this multimeter will come with a carrying case. It'll also come with a temperature probe that you can get and remove these leads, plug the temperature probe in, put it on Fahrenheit, and be able to check temperature and dryers and oven ranges and etc. So let's get into this thing. Um, your first setting that you have here is going to be your volts setting okay and i'm gonna switch it over here to volts this is how you power up this unit by switching it over to volts and right now it's currently on ac which stands for alternative i mean alternating i always say alternative alternating current okay so the next mode that you'll have when you hit your mode button here is going to be dc current that stands for direct current, okay? So let's go back to AC current. And I'll show you here in the clip how we're gonna use AC current. We're gonna go test the uh, power, the, the uh, outlet on my dryer out here. We're gonna show you how, I'm gonna show you how I test. So here I'm gonna demonstrate a few things here with this test meter, okay? You see this clamp that's up here on the top and you see this little lot that's right here. This is going to let you know if you're ne next to a live wire, next to, you know, live power. So watch this. You see how that light came on? That lets me know that there's live power into this box here. And this also will come on when you touch your leads to anything. But let's go and uh, let's let's check the voltage out of this terminal block here. Now there's we're gonna make sure we're on AC, which when you turn your meter on, it should normally be on AC. Okay, I'm gonna take my two leads here, and normally what I like to do is I like to go from L1 to ground and then from L2 to ground to make sure I got 120 on each post. So once I do that, like this here, and then boom, like so. Boom, we got 120 right here on this, on L1. And we're going to take it, and we're going to go to L2. And we got 120 there. All right, guys, so I'll show you here. We got 250 volts. Okay, DC current. It'll tell you, especially when you're pulling up a schematic, and we're going to do a video on schematics, it'll tell you if you need AC or DC and how many volts you should be getting. 
A lot of times when you got a main power board and then you got your display board, a lot of times your power that's going into your display board is going to be DC, direct current, coming straight out of the power board into that board to power it on. And it'll be a lot lesser volt. So uh, that's the difference between your AC and your DC current. Let's move on to continuity. Right here, currently on what they call the horseshoe here, as you can see. Okay, right now it's set on auto, and here I can check resistance. A lot of times when you check an attempt sensor on an oven range, it'll arm out to 240. That's common for room temperature, but this is your setting where you would check ohms and resistance. Okay, and this lets you know if that wire is able to carry the current that it's supposed to carry that there's no damage in there. If there's damage in there, it's going to have, uh, you know, it, it's not going to function right. The amps are not going to be right. It, it's not going to draw like it's supposed to. It's not going to read like it's supposed to because a lot of times when the resistance is real high, there's an issue there. So, that being said, let's talk about the continuity test. Now, on this particular multimeter unit, um, you, you have the mode, and when, you go on the, when you're on the horseshoe here, uh, this has an actual alarm on this one. It beeps when you have continuity. And right now, when you look at this multimeter, you just see the, the little horseshoe there, and you see the little speaker sing, signal there. Okay, so now when I put my leads together, that means that that's a closed circuit. Now you got things like your uh, fuses here that sets above on your heating element. Um, they're supposed to be a closed circuit. A lot of times these will, will blow because of ventilation problems and different stuff like that, but this will blow and this will cut the power uh, off of L1 because what happens is, is L1 is going to come through here. It's going to run through here. It's going to run through the thermostat. L2 is going to plug straight into the heating element. So when these break, it will cut the power to uh, the heating element, causing it not to heat anymore. So this particular one here, I believe this is the bad one. Let's see if it's bad. We're going to check it real fast. We're going to put our leads on it. And actually, this is the good one. That means that all the circuits in this fuse, the, the little wires, the little mechanism that's in it, that means they're not broken. That means current can properly flow through this thing because there's no open circuit anywhere. See? So now let's check the one that is bad. Here, this one's blown. Nothing. Nothing. See? Let's check this thermostat here. That's good. Okay. Now picture these prongs here. Now, these prongs, just say if these prongs are on a heating element. Okay. Regardless if what kind of style heating element it is, it don't matter regardless. When you put your lead here and you put your lead here, it's supposed to be a closed circuit. That means if you're not reading continuity on particular this thing or you're not getting continuity on any kind of heating element, then that lets you know that somewhere in that heating element is a broken, it's, it's, it's open somewhere. So, that's how you do that. That's your continuity check. Um, these are the main essentials that I use. Now, the Fahrenheit over here is where I would turn it. I would take my leads out. I would put my probe in here. And I would stick my other end of my probe in my oven range. Or I would stick it in my dryer. And it would give me the readings of what the temperature is that it's picking up right here. But um, this is just the essentials of what I use. Um, 
I just wanted to go over and show you guys that these are the main essentials. One more time, you got your volts with your AC. That's when you're checking, like making sure you got power coming to your heating element. Uh, you're mostly checking and making sure you got power coming to whatever you're working on. Uh, not less as stated otherwise. And just say if you don't have a schematic and you do have it on AC current, it will read a little bit funky. It will read a little bit different, especially when you just got a direct current coming into it. So then you can switch it and it, and it should read properly on what it needs to be. But uh, you got your volts, your continuity, uh, your ohms test here. Uh, again, like I said, you switch it over to the mode. That's going to ring when I, when I got continuity. Uh, we got the Fahrenheit. This is where I check, uh, make sure that my heating, that my oven range is heating properly, that my dryer is heating properly. And these are just essentials of what I use. Uh, again, this is a Southwire. Now you pick this up in between 40 to 60 bucks. It will have a carrying case, temp probe, and then also you can get them with the wall checker to make sure that the outlet is functioning properly. There's no open ground or nothing like that in the wall outlet. But this is David with DC Appliance Repair, and I just wanted to bring this footage to you guys and just show you a little bit about the multimeter. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. It's not complicated at all. Um, you know, you can get sophisticated and stuff. And yes, I know how to test control boards and, and to go into detail with it, but I cannot do it without this test meter. I cannot figure out what's going on without this test meter. The next video we're going to be going into is going to be teaching about schematics and how to read schematics and the different, uh, the language on the schematics and what the language means on it. Uh, open circuits, closed circuits, resistance, different things like that. It'll show you different circuits that are supposed to open and close at different times. It's not real hard. Uh, you know, you can see where your L1 and your L2 runs to, you follow the lines that tells you where it runs into, where it switches, where it changes. Uh, you know, we'll go into detail on schematics. I'll have one here in front of me and we'll do a video on that. But this is David with DC Appliance Repair. If you appreciate the content that I'm putting out for you guys, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Uh, be glad to do that. Also, if you're not a part of the tech chat group and you would like to check it out, just join it. You can always unsubscribe if you don't like it. It's 30 bucks a month. Feel free to check it out. I have the link in the description below. But this is David with DC Appliance Repair and I'll see you in the next video.